Welcome to ECU Flash Training Part 6. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our fuel injector data that we have to program into our EVO 8 and EVO 9 ECUs. So this is going to be including our static flow rate, which is going to be the injector flow rate size, the injector latency, and the low or short pulse width adder tables, as well as our minimum injector pulse width. All of these are going to play a role in how we convert the desired fuel mass into an injector pulse width, so they're going to be hitting the desired air fuel that we'd like, whether they're going to be enclosed or open loop conditions. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into the video so we can check it out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at our injector data information that we have to program into our EVO 8 or EVO 9 ECUs. So when the ECU is converting the fuel mash calculations, it can probably convert that into an injector pulse width and deliver the fuel mass that it's expecting. So we went over in the training course, the underlying equation of fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. Air mass is gonna be either coming from our speed density calculations or from the mass airflow calculations. And then we'll find that we know what the target air fuel is gonna be from our open loop target air fuel table. It's gonna be then turning that into a fuel mass. The fuel mass will then can convert it here. Um, looking in our file, we have injector data up here at the top. All of the injector data is going to then turn that into the correct injector pulse width, which will then deliver the correct amount of fuel mass it's expecting, which will allow us to hit the target air fuel that we'd like. So it's actually a pretty simple equation of how it's all going to work. And this injector data information here is probably one of the single most important things that you program when you're going and changing your injectors in your vehicle. So um, if you're going to be mass airflow based or speed density based tuning, it does not matter. Um, the injector data information here is important in, in each of them. And uh, we'll find in either situation, if the injector data is wrong, it'll throw off the entire fuel calibration process. So if we're mass airflow based, if we have our injector data off, it'll cause us to over or under report the air mass to try to correct the injector pulse width. If we're here in our speed density table, um, in our 3D speed VE table here, it'll cause us to go into this table here and start to skew up that amount of air mass it's gonna be simulating from our table here. So it's important that we get the injector data correct. And again, uh, probably one of the most important things that you start to work with and program here. So let's jump into our injector data and talk about these tables here and what they represent. So we have an injector scaling table here, to a 1D value that we can change. We have our latency values that we have here in another table. We have our injector flow linearization data here, or the low injector pulse width uh, correction. And then we have here the minimum injector pulse width. So all four of these tables here play a role in converting our fuel mass into an injector pulse width. Let's break this down table by table so this makes sense of why this is important, why this is needed. So let's close these out here, and we'll leave our first table open here, which is gonna be our injector size scaling. This is known as your injector flow rate. Now, this is gonna be what's known as a static flow rate value. We'll get into that here in just a little bit. We'll find that this is just a basic value on the surface. If you're looking at this, it just shows here 513 cc per minute. So whatever your injector size, you're gonna be entering it here. But there's a lot more going on with this value so that um, it's gonna be converting the requested amount of fuel mass into an injector pulse width. So this is the very first thing it takes a look at. This is actually gonna be what's known as the injector slope. So this is gonna be establishing what kind of injector pulse width is gonna to correlate to what kind of injector uh, fuel mass it's gonna be entering into the engine or the amount of flow rate it's gonna be uh, trying to deliver. So um, coming up on the screen right now, it'll be, it'll be easier to illustrate this and understand what this value represents here. So we're gonna find on this chart, on our one axis, we're gonna find flow rate or what we're gonna be potentially delivering to the engine. And then on the bottom axis, it's gonna be the effective injector pulse width or the injector pulse width that it's gonna be calculating from. So Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.